In this video, I'm going to be trying to train a model of myself using dreamlook.ai. So I did this previous video, I'll leave a link in the description below of using Dream Booth. And this is another service that you can pay to make models. So as a state, it's very quick. The cost is okay. It's reasonable costs. And you can really achieve some really cool stuff and they have a pretty intuitive breakdown of how you can get these looks, like prompts that people have used, examples of how they look, the steps used to generate these things. And under generation, this is kind of interesting here. I haven't really fiddled with this too much. I guess you can actually try out some of the models that you make. And under training, they have the default setting here. This is like your starting off point. So they have it simple. You can train that person, animal, a style, or an object. And it says, you know, the type of model that you want to make, base model that you're using. And this is like the, again, this is the, the default one that shows when you first load this up. And you can see I tried making a few of these things already at various steps and a lot of fiddling with speeds because my results are very quite a bit. Um, I'm not sponsored by this company. This is just my honest opinion and feedback on it. So try it yourself. So I'm going to go to expert mode and under here you have a few more options to create your model. So you can have the base model, which I think in Dream Booth is just the Stable Diffusion 1.5 and they may have updated it now, but Essentially, you can choose these different ones to be your base model. So you can have Open Journey, Analog Diffusion, anything version 3, which is like the anime kind of style one. You have the realistic looking ones. And since I'm going to be training it on myself, I will try their newest realistic one. So Realistic Vision 3. All the examples I saw in that looked really good. And I'm just going to keep my prompt the same. So as it states here, when the number of steps fine tune your model for between 100 to 2000, uh, each 500 training steps will cost you 10 tokens. So the settings suggestion here to train your model, they kind of give rough estimate here. So starting point of 100 training steps per training image. Uh, so for example, 13 images, you would train it for 1,300 steps. So there's a little bit of math involved, but it's not too hard to figure yeah. out. So back into the training area here, I'm gonna leave this as the default setting, but here are your learning rates. And again, if you hover over this, it'll tell you about that. So how fast the model will train. E1-6 is a good default between E1-7 and E1-4. I don't know what that last part means. <laughs> um, basically, this would be a slower training rate and a faster training rate. I wish they kind of labeled this a little differently, like fast and slow or vice versa. Anyway, so I'm gonna leave, it, leave that as the default. I'm gonna import the same data set I used when I trained my own model in Dream Booth for this. So I dragged in a bunch of images. I'm just gonna be fair and use the same images that I used for Dream Booth for Dream Look. So it's quite a bit more images that may end up screwing me in the end, but I don't know. <laughs> We're just gonna... We're gonna experiment and see. So these are already like cropped to the sizes they're supposed to be. As you look into like the training, they say, you know, give different lighting and backgrounds and, you know, wear different clothing and different poses just to, and facial expressions, just to give a variety to your model when you're training it. Uh, Cause if you only have like the same one Zoolander like look, <laughs> it's only gonna produce that same image. So you wanna have some variety there. And the first time I tried this, I kept having the same hairstyle. So I realized, oh, I need to have like different hair colors and styles to kind of give me some variety. So I changed that up the second iteration when I tried to train it in Dream Booth. Anyway, so my base model, I'm going to keep it as the realistic vision three default training our learning rate. If I input 110 images, we multiply that by 100. So just basically add two zeros. So now that should be enough training steps for all the images that I gave it. And it's going to, it shows me at the bottom how much is it's going to cost me. <laughs> so for 1100 steps, it's going to be 
30 tokens that's going to use. So I have 60 left over. I ended up purchasing the $25 option there with the 300 tokens, and I was able to do this a few times because you're probably not going to get it to look amazing the first time around, just to, you know, being honest. So it's going to take some trial and error. And I'm using Diffusion B, which now can utilize safe tensors. So I'm going to have that toggled on still. If you want a regular CKPT file, just uncheck this box. But if you want a safe tensor, check that box. I also want to extract a LoRa just in case I want to use this later on. Again, this is now something you can use in Diffusion B. And of course, if you're using like automatic 1111, this is always, this has been a thing, but it's kind of new to Diffusion B. But I want to be able to like merge my model with other weird art styles and I'm, that'll be a whole nother video. So I'm going to extract the LoRa for this and I don't need the offset noise. I was trying to figure out what that was and the examples they give are kind of helpful. I'm still trying to figure this out as I go because this is all still relatively new, you know. Uh, but yes, so the examples I give for offset noise when you have it toggled on and off. So it just gives you more contrast. So without offset on the left and then with it on the right. And honestly, like I tried this with a few of the other models I made with it on and I don't know, like I guess for portrait kind of style stuff, it might look great, but <laughs> for the other art ones I was trying, it didn't turn out so good. So I just left that toggled off and they have a video that you can check out too. It kind of explains it more in depth. So I'm going to leave that toggled off for my example. I don't have any captions. If you hover over that, so use Im ca image captions instead of single instance prompts. Uh, expects expects a JSON file, JSON file. Check the documentation for details. So for that, essentially, it's you labeling each individual image in like a I think it's like a text format or something. And when you upload it, uh, wherever you're training in that, it'll associate that text with that image. So if you're like, you know, sailing on a boat, if you're driving a car or whatever, you can like specify exactly what's in the image and it helps it kind of narrow down what it is. To my understanding, I may be explaining that completely wrong. <laughs> That's kind of what I gathered from it. But yeah, so I'm just going to have these two boxes toggled on and that should be it. So I'm again going to have this as my instance prompt. Even though, again, they're default. Uh, yeah, I'll just leave that as, as is. And then we'll just hit start. Get this little Q status bar that will start loading. And well, once it's completed, you'll see the duration. But yeah, so if you have the option to download the model and the LoRa file, you'll see both of those. But if you didn't toggle the LoRa file, that won't be there. It'll just be the model. And this little clipboard will be how you can download that. So they're pretty decent with their privacy options. And as they state, they delete any images that you upload after 48 hours. Uh, but, you know, just be smart about it. Don't be don't be a fool. And they tell you, like, you're not supposed to upload any nudity or whatever, stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Keep it PC. Uh, yeah. So we probably have to wait close to maybe 10 minutes. Click on, you know, whatever file format that you chose, whether it's a safe tensor, a CKPT, or a LoRa. Depending on what you have, it'll show up in this little download window here. And I already did this, but if you, if you click to download it, You'll get the little window that's starting to download. And once that's all done, you'll notice it's also labeled as DreamLook AI underscore whatever base model that you use. So if you use, you know, the analog, if you use Stable Diffusion 1.5, if you use Realistic Vision, if you use, you know, whatever other base model you chose, it's going to have that. And then it'll be the file format that you chose, whether it's a Bora or a safe tensor. So just keep that in mind. So you want to like label this as whatever you want to have it called. I wish that was an option in here. I don't see it as a way to do it straight out of the app, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. So download your file back into Fusion B. I already went and did this, but go to import from computer, choose the file, wherever location you saved it as, and it'll pop up here. 
just note if you don't change the name before you import it it's going to have that long ending to it so i did this with a few that i'm still testing out right now so I, what i'll do is delete them out of the uh, my computer um, I have them stored externally, but like I'll delete them out of here and then label it correctly and then re-import it so the name is changed. Now my model's here. So I went and found a previous version that I made using the selfie version 2 that I trained in uh, Dream Booth. So I'm going to compare it to how this looks now. So I'm going to just go under Actions and Generate Similar Images and what, that, what that's going to do is bringing on over here and this is a weird bug but like i already re-imported my model but it doesn't show up anyway it carries over all the settings that i had for that image okay so again this was from the original model uh interesting that it's generating a different image even though that wasn't wasn't exactly how that looked but you know okay we get a sense of like the quality though so i'm gonna stop this and then I'm just gonna run the brand new one and we'll compare. And the likeness is there for the most part. I wanna try this on a few more images and see what this looks like. So here's the newer model. So I'm, I'm gonna increase the resolution and see what this looks like. All is too. Once you do generate your models back in Dream Look AI under generation, uh, you'll have the option to choose the models that you made. Again, this kind of sucks that it's not labeled, but essentially you can choose the models that you just made and run a prompt on the thing. Uh, you are going to be charged, as it says, though. Generating eight images will cost you one token, but you can potentially test out the model before you actually download the thing. I've been kind of bouncing back and forth between previous models, current models, and interesting things are happening <laughs> to say the least so on the left here's the original uh, model that i had made and then this is the same model re-imported into diffusion b i don't know why it's not quite generating the same thing as you can see and then this is from one that i trained in full length on dream look ai and it's close. Of course, it's not a one-to-one -one replica. And then one that I did again through DreamLook AI, but at a faster learning rate and fewer images. So it's interesting because I'm not getting the same thing I'm able to replicate. Does the quality look terrible? No, but it's not the same. <laughs> um, and then the likeness was like, I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Like this is again the original model re-imported, and it's supposed to look like this. This is from the previous version of B. And when I re-imported it, it's looking like this, and the likeness is way off on the other one where I trained it at a faster learning rate. <laughs> it did me so dirty. Oh, damn. Yeah, I don't know. I was I had high hopes because like all the um, examples they had. And it's kind of funny because they have me in shorts because some of the images had shorts on there. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, like <laughs> I'm sorry. That's hilarious. Uh, okay. Serious time. Serious time. Yeah, they did me so dirty. Like, the likeness is like way off. Oh, oh, hell no. Yeah. I don't know, man. I was hoping to be blown away and you can make some fun looking art like the quality doesn't look bad the likeness isn't quite there so for training it on a person at least from my own experience so far it hasn't been mind-blowing uh style wise I'll do a few more tests and get so I ran a few more tests and kind of interesting um yeah, there's a few things going on again. Some of it's re-importing an old model and it's giving me different results, which is kind of odd, but uh, yeah, just kind of looking at the original model versus two different versions that I trained. Uh, this is just a, the trained one. And then this model is actually merged with another one and kind of comparing results 
and overall the quality isn't bad and I have one more comparison here this is just like a blind test which one's the original and which one's the new one and which one's merged hard to tell <laughs> uh, that's actually pretty promising like surprisingly this was the original model and the original image that I had was like higher quality for some reason and when I reran it through uh, Diffusion, Diffusion B, for whatever reason this time, it looks like a lot lower quality. And this is the one that was trained with the uh, realistic version 3, or whatever it's called, uh, as the base model. And like the details look fantastic. I like the lighting, skin texture looks pretty clean. And this is at the lowest resolution here, like I didn't train this at a high resolution. And then this is actually merged with uh, one of my pencil models. And I feel like the texture actually is improved uh, with the merged one here. Like I can actually see like the texture on the hat and it's kind of flat on the, uh, the one that's trained in uh, DreamLook AI by itself. And the original has like zero texture. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I think overall, it's not a bad way to go if you're trying to train models. Again, this is Dream Look AI, and a previous video I had did with uh, Dream Booth. And I say if you're gonna spend a little money, um, I feel like you can get your money's worth out of Dream Look AI. I was very skeptical from the first different uh, images I was generating there. And yeah, this last couple ones have kind of uh, thrown me for a loop. <laughs> I'm actually kind of impressed. After running this through uh, the paces again, I tried it with vector art. And here was the merged model with my pencil model. So that's the portrait model with the pencil. This was the uh, just simply the portrait model by itself, the updated version. This was the original one and it was getting really weird. I let the pencil merged model run for a little bit just to see what it could do with the vector styles. It definitely has a lot more detail in the face. Here are a few more examples. And then this was the updated portrait model. Looks pretty good. And then comparing it to the original model, now this one doesn't look so great. <laughs> so it's, it really just varies on like your seed numbers because it's the same prompts and everything. So. What do you think? Do you like Dream Booth better? Or do you like Dream Look AI better? Uh, again, you can use Dream Look AI. I think they give you like 5,000 uh, tokens for free or something when you sign up the first time. And uh, yeah, you can actually make a few different models with that. And Dream Booth, as I showed you in my previous video, you can actually make a model as well, you just need like the space in your computer and just depending on how many people are using the servers, it might be faster or slower. But yeah, this is actually pretty impressive. I'm not gonna lie, I had like my doubts. And again, you can always rerun this at a higher resolution and kind of get different results. So from the base level, you know, like a, was it 512 by 512? I think is the default in the Diffusion V, not bad. All right, y'all, um, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Uh, as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon with the next one.